So when a covalent bond breaks, it leads to, it's basically called a fission. So when the, there are two ways by which fission takes place and there are two types rather of uh, covalent bond fission. One is a homolytic, the other is called heterolytic fission. So homolytic fission, let's, I'll just write the, the uh, example first and then we will discuss about it. So homolytic fission takes place and leads to basically the formation of two particular, I mean two atoms and these atoms each, so okay, basically a bond is formed by the sharing of two electrons and what happens in homolytic fission is each of these atoms will take one electron each and they will have, they will have uh, one electron and they are called as a free radical. They lead to the formation of something called the free radicals. So here in homolytic fission the, the bond is broken and each electron is given to one of the atoms each and leads to the formation of a free radical and this is important one important thing is it is denoted by a half arrow so when we denote it by a half arrow it means only one electron is moving if we denote it by a full arrow means two electrons are moving so half headed arrow shows that one of the electron is going to B and the other electron has gone to A that is exactly what we are denoting free radicals are one of the intermediates that we will be studying about in the next video. Uh, so another example of, um, of a homolytic fission could be C6H5COOCOC6H5. Now the oxygen, these two atoms of oxygen are basically the same right so they have the same chemical nature because of the atoms that they're surrounded by so they have equal electronegativity so they both will get one electron each so and this in turn in the presence of heat or light will lead to the formation of two free radicals two c6 h5 co o free radicals and this again further will lead to the formation of 2C6H5 radicals plus 2CO2. So the CO2 gets comes out and leads to the formation of a benzyl free radical. On the other hand heterolytic fission is unsymmetric. Here we know that uh, our atoms, each atom got one of the electron. In case of heterolytic fission, that's not the case. So here, you have two cases. First is when B is more electronegative than A. When B is more electronegative than A, this get both the electrons and leads to the formation of A plus plus B minus. Similarly, if A is more electronegative than B, a will get both the electrons and lead to the formation of A minus plus B plus. Here in heterolytic fission, it is unsymmetrical in nature, which means the one of the atoms is going to get both the electrons, while the other is going to be left with a positive charge. And this in turn depends upon the electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of the atom to pull the shared electron towards itself. Now in case of carbon, it, if, uh, if the carbon is more electronegative than the atom it's bound to, it leads to the formation of a negatively charged ion called as the carbanion and when it gets the electron pair, when it is more, I mean when it's less electronegative than the atom it's attached to, it leads to the formation of a positively charged carbocation. We will be learning about carbanions, carbocations and free radicals in the next video. They are basically the intermediates which are formed during a chemical reaction. But before we go there, there is one thing we need to learn. Curved arrows. If you notice up until now we've had various curved arrows for resonance structures also we've had arrows which are represent which basically represent the bond the change in bonding due to the electron redistribution. So it is denoted by a curved arrow and this can be this can be either 
the shift of electrons from a double bond to the adjacent bo sigma bond and this is what we observed when we were writing various resonance structures and here in this case the electron pair is basically shifting from the pi bond to the other sigma or the adjacent bond so here you will have x here you, this double bond shift became a single and this became a double bond now this uh, the curved arrow can also denote the movement of electrons from the pi bond to the adjacent atom so for example in this molecule in this particular molecule this double bond is shifting to x then that is also denote that can also be denoted by the curved arrow if you remember which i had also already told that the curved arrow denotes the movement of electrons and that is why we can't show positive charge and we can show its movement no this is not possible because a curved arrow denotes the movement of electrons and this can also show the movement of a lone pair of electrons towards the adjacent or a charge towards the adjacent bond so a curved arrow is going is showing the movement of electrons and it is basically giving us the idea about the fact that electrons have moved from one of the atoms and this can be between a pi bond and the adjacent uh, bond or a pi bond and an adjacent atom or lone pair and a bond so with that we finish the basic idea behind fission of covalent bonds and the curved arrow notation in the next video we are going to be talking about reaction intermediates reaction intermediates as in free radicals carbonions and carbocations do check it out